Oh yeah, you read the title right. This build will cost you a little over 2,000 platinum. What's good folks, it's Nightmare Frame here with a new updated Mesa build. Now all of you are familiar with the Topaz shards, the orange shards that give you a larger critical chance increase than the red tile forward shards. So yes, we will be using those. However, there is another thing that we'll be using that costs us just a bit over 2000 platinum. Now do you need to use this tool? Well, if you want a bigger boost in crit chance and crit damage, then yeah, you're going to need to use this tool. However, the build will work just fine without it. But then it doesn't look as cool. And this tool that costs 2000 plus platinum is an arcane. And a very recent arcane. Melee Crescendo. That's exactly how you pronounce it. Trust me, I know. Yes, I will be using Melee Crescendo to boost Mesa's damage. It sounds weird to some, but hear me out. What if I tell you this Melee Arcane can buff another Arcane that buffs Mesa? Now, if you have not seen my dedicated video for this Arcane, please do go check that out. It explains a bit more of the mechanic and how to activate it a lot easier. And for those who know my previous Mesa video, which I released as soon as they were worth companions, well, we just made that build a lot more easier to deal with without the micromanaging of rebuilding your shields on the Adarza Kavat. Because on this loadout, we won't be using the Adarza Kavat. As it stands, there's an arcane that functions with Mesa's regulators. This is currently a feature, and we don't know how long it will last until it's no longer a feature. So if you have both of the arcanes that I'll be showcasing, then use it and have fun until it's no longer a feature. You will be going from red crits to consistent oranges and losing a little bit of crit damage. That's the only thing that will happen when it is no longer a feature. That means the Mesa build will still be functional and still be very powerful. First, let's start off with the Archon shards they'll be using. As you can see, I'm using full crit chance topaz shards. It says 1.5% for every time you kill an enemy affected by heat damage, and it stacks up to 75%. So all of these will give me a total of 375% crit chance increase. Think of this crit chance increase as a mod, not a final critical chance increase like Arcane Avenger. So this will be additive to any modded value on the regulators. The regulators have a base crit chance of 25%. Now let's see how we calculate this to get our our final crit chance increase. So with fully stacked topaz shards, that's 375%. Plus my critical chance mod, you're either going to be running Prime Pistol Gambit or Creeping Bullseye. For this showcase, I'll be using Creeping Bullseye. So that's 375% plus 200% gives us a 575% crit chance increase and you turn this into a multiplier which is going to be a 6.75 times crit chance increase multiply that by 25 percent and you get a total value of 168.75 and then we factor in arcane avenger which will be coming from our warframe and all you have to do is add 45 on top of that and this is a flat crit chance increase which is a calculation applied after all of your calculated buildup. So it gives me a total of 213.75 times crit chance increase. This is without the feature. If we factor in the feature, the calculation goes like this. 375 plus 200 plus 240. And we get a 9.15 crit chance increase. Multiply this by 25%. And this is our crit chance increase. The previous increase was 200% with Arcane Avenger. This is without Arcane Avenger. We add Arcane Avenger on top of that. It's a 273.75 increase. 100% is yellow, 200 is orange, and 300 is reds. The 200% part means we're consistently hitting orange crits and a 73% chance to bump it into the red crit territory. Now you already know the melee crescendo increase. This builds up our combo counter when performing finishers, giving us initial combo for the rest of the mission. Why am I using the Furax? Well, for one, it comes with Amalgam Furax body count, which is a 45% fire rate increase on my secondaries. And regulators are secondaries. Why do we need to build up combo? Well, it's for the secondary outburst. Now remember what I said, if this is no longer a feature, the build will work just fine without it. You don't need to spend all all that platinum. Now, this gives me a critical chance and a critical damage increase per combo counter consumed. And since I have initial combo counter of 12 times, this grants me a total of 240% crit chance and crit damage increase. This is a modded value, meaning it is additive to my mods. So we get additional crit damage from outburst, modded crit damage, and we also have a final 
crit damage increase using Tenacious Bond. Our companion will have Tenacious Bond for the crit damage increase and Reinforced Bond for some additional fire rate. Using this on the Worm because it is one of the most versatile Sentinel, giving you the highest shield pull out of all the Sentinels, easily being able to equip Reinforced Bond to give you the increased fire rate. On top of that, it also gives you Negate which cleanses you of status effects. And to run Tenacious Bond, make sure you have a weapon with a large crit chance increase. So either the Volcox or the Volcock, either one. And slap on Critical Delay and you're sorted. That's it. So what is the alternative if you don't have Chris Kendo leveled up? Well, you can use a rank one. It just takes slightly longer. Now, if you don't have that route, you can also sub it out for Ceramic Dagger. This evolution gun and blade also works with Mace's regulators. Kill enemies and you build up initial combo. So initial combo and initial combo gives you seven times and then you can mod it with covert lethality and corrupt charge and this gives you 180 percent increase on secondary outburst for some additional utility on the primary weapons you have two options the afontis which gives you 20 percent fire rate increase it's not much but hey it's there this can also be beneficial for your teammates as it gives other bonuses or the miter if you're going into void corrupted missions so you can deal with nullifiers so now let's talk about how we've put this mesa together without the the expensive bits. The helmet ability is going to be Nourish for my viral damage increase and energy multiple. Why do we need this? Because it is going to be a negative efficiency build. And that energy multiplier is going to be so beneficial for this negative efficiency build. Now, why did I opt to put in a lot of strength onto this build? There's a reason why I went this route. Because strength is way more important than adding base damage on your regulators. Let me explain. Adding strength gives you base damage on the regulators, meaning this multiplier on the regulators that you get from strength is additive to your base damage mods. So modding it with Hornet Strike and a lot of strength, you won't see you won't see that much of a benefit. So this is why when people mod for a lot of strength, they go with a faction damage mod and additional elemental damage because those are multipliers. I'm aware a lot of people don't like running faction damage mods. And the best part about this loadout, you don't need faction damage multipliers. So let's take a look at how I've modded the regulators. Since I have 243% strength, this gives me a 3.64 times base damage increase on my regulators, opting out the need to have any base damage on my weapons. The reason why you see a 7.5 versus a 6.3 is because of Tenacious Bond. For multi-shot, I have Galvanized Diffusion. We have Creeping Bullseye for our crit chance increase and Prime Target Cracker for our critical damage. Fire Rate coming from Anemic Agility and the Arcanes on my Mesa. Anyone that tells you Anemic Agility is a waste of a slant, they have no idea what they're talking about. Fire rate is a huge DPS increase for Mesa. For my elemental damage multipliers, I have Prime Convulsion and Pathogen Rounds to form Corrosive. I already have Viral from Nourish, now I have Corrosive, and I have Heat. And the final mod can be whatever you want. Accelerated Isotope, this gives you Radiation. So now you can have Viral, Corrosive, Heat, and Radiation. And the best part about this mod is that it grants you additional fire rates. Other options, you could run Lethal Torrent that gives you fire rate and multi-shot or Gunslinger just for the fire rate increase. But having all this elemental damage, crit chance, crit damage, and a bunch of fire rate gives us a lot of DPS. And this time, I opted to run Creeping Bullseye because I have a lot of fire rate increase coming from my Worm, my Melee, my Arcanes, and modded fire rate. Let's not forget that 20% increase from Aphantis, which kind of cuts out Creeping Bullseye. Here's another thing that I want people to understand. Modding with 60-60 elemental damage is a waste of your time. Mesa is not about proccing status effects. She has a base 10% status chance increase. Adding 60-60s to get a chance to pronk an element to have some DOTs is a waste of your time and DPS. By the time you notice a proc, the enemy is already dead. Because a DOT, damage over time, like Toxin Heat Slash, take a whole second before they can start dealing damage. Now, I want you to realize, if you're shooting long enough to notice that damage over time tick in damage, you're not dealing damage. You're tickling the enemies. Stop trying to cope with DOT Mesa and kill the enemies before you notice anything tick on the enemies. Let's go over to Steel Path and show you how this build works step by step. 
Now you can see on the top right corner, I have Outburst and my Tenacious Bond active. Outburst only gives me 40% because I don't have combo on my melee. And to build up that initial combo with finishers, I'll be using the Vazarin Focus School. Why the Vazarin Focus School? Well, simple. Its second ability provides with some ragdoll grouping. And when you ragdoll group, it's easier to perform ground finishers, which also counts towards building up melee crescendo's initial combo. Now let's go see this in action. Depending on the height of the pile or the height of the enemy, you'd either have to align your camera in a certain way. Group enemies. There you go. Ground finishers. I'm priming them here because I'm also stacking up my topaz shards. We have 179% crit chats increase. Group them up. Ground finishers. I know this is not a great way to start off with Mesa, but it's good if you're playing solo. Because doing this in a group, not that great. Have we built up full uh, 12 times? Yes, now we have full 12 times combo. This is initial combo. 367%. And now we built up all of our crit chance increase. All we have to do now is just aim at enemies and they die. You can use Arafontis, kill within this dome. And we gain this buff right here. Which gives me a 20% fire rate increase. It lasts for 40 seconds until I go back to that same dome and kill enemies to refresh it. Being in the dome has the buff remain there, just like being in on Wisp Motes. The duration countdown does not begin until you move away. Also, if you didn't realize, I'm using the legacy damage numbers. So this means it will accurately show you if you're hitting reds and oranges. Because unfortunately, the enhanced damage numbers, they stroke your ego. Because they prioritize the highest critical tier over anything else. Are you noticing any status procs on enemies? No, because they're already dead. Alloy armor, no longer a problem because we have corrosive, viral, and radiation. Oh yeah, and heat. I won't have an issue with a majority of the enemy types. And this is not even using faction damage. 185, one shot. You see the difference of people attempting to proc a status effect and people actually modding accordingly to one tap enemies? Yeah. The damage difference is huge. And for the people worried about doing this against Murmurs, well, let me just show you. You can also perform ground finishers on Murmurs. Wow. Use that Vazarin grouping. Ground finishers. An outburst has built up thanks to Crest Kendo. Look at this. Murmurs are simply being deleted. That was an Eximus. All right, let's go back into the Orbiter to see how this Mesa is built. I'm using my Epitaph as a primer to apply the heat status effect and then kill them, which is a lot faster than depending on Mesa's pistols alone. And enemies need to have heat status effect on them for them to die, not just heat damage. As you can see right there, kill enemies affected by heat damage. The Aphontis, if you want to. All I have is fire rates, reload speed, and a mog observation for the sprint speed increase. And now onto the Mesa build. In the Aura, I have Combat Discipline. This is to damage my health when I kill enemies. The reason I'm damaging my health is to trigger Arcane Avenger. As you can see right there, on damage you have 21% chance to get 45% crit chance. This is a flat crit chance increase affecting all of my equipped weapons. Prime sure footed because spending less time in your butt is a huge DPS increase. And you're not going to be in your peacemakers all the time. For those who want to run Mesa's Waltz, you can. Up to you. I'll highly suggest to run Handspring over Mesa's Waltz. Walking around is a waste of time. Shoot and move to the next target because you're killing enemies so fast, you're not stuck there roaming. Duration at 207%. We want to have at least base range because it helps us out with shooting gallery. Stunning enemies within a 60 meter radius and nourishes retaliation, proccing some viral on enemies. Because when enemies hit me, I also have Shatter Shield, which reduces projectile damage dealt to me and bounces it back towards the enemy. So that's why I opted to go with this duration rather than narrow minded. However, for those who don't care about this little thing, you can go with narrow minded and go with an adaptation build because then you'll just be tanking things. So if you run narrow minded and adaptation, this way it gives you 254 
4% duration and gives you some damage reduction and a slot open for Umbral Vitality. Now you get a larger strength increase. Equilibrium is going to be my energy and health orb conversion. This replenishes me of energy and it also heals me thanks to combat discipline dealing damage to my health. All right, folks, that is the updated Mesa build using a 2000 plus platinum arcane to buff another arcane to then buff Mesa. Hope you've enjoyed and learned something from it. And if you did, please feel free to leave a like, share, and subscribe for more Warframe content, streams, and so much more. Do refer to the description. Thanks for watching, and as always, peace. Bye-bye now.